this is a special treat for me. I'm Leanne Wood, president of Flying Camel PR, and I've been the stage MC throughout the course of the three days. And today, I actually get to be uh, involved in the conversation to present the uh, NKBA designer finds. So I'm usually standing behind there and then I leave, but now I'm going to sit down and uh, take part in the panel. As you know, the KBIS floor abounds with new must-see products. And I've talked to so many people, I don't know how you guys feel, but I've talked to so many people over the last few days that have said, information overload, oh my goodness, I have just taken in so much. Do you guys feel that way after three days of exploring the show? So what we thought we'd do, and we, did it, we started it last year and it was very successful. We brought in four uh, NKBA designers to present their picks. So what you're gonna get here is kind of a curated summary of everything that these designers uh, saw at the show. And what we'd really love at the end is if, if you share your best picks too, um, you can ask questions as we go along, but I'd love to hear from the audience too about something that really, really, you know, hashtag mind blown, something that really, really uh, resonated with you that you've seen. So um, let me welcome today's des NKBA designers that are joining us. Welcome to the stage, Young Ha, Young Ha Interior Design. Yay! Nicholas Moriarty, Nicholas Moriarty Interiors. Jeremy Bauer, Bauer Clifton Interiors, and his partner, Jason Clifton, Bauer Clifton Interiors. And now I'm gonna, I get to sit down. This is really cool. <laughs> On the stage. Yes. I'll say hello so we know everyone's microphones are working, everything's cool. Okay, so let's start out by getting to know you guys a little bit. Uh, you spent the last two days scouring the show, as we said. So maybe, Young, you can start. Tell us where your design practice is, the type of projects that make you very, very happy, and a little bit about your design vibe. Um, so my name is Young Ha. I'm an interior designer from New York City. Um, I was on the board of directors uh, for the NKBA for two years. Um, our practice is residential and commercial. We're working on a hotel project in Turks and Caicos right now, so we've been busy um, sourcing for the project. There's Brett, who runs my business. He's been <laughs> running around like crazy. Um, and it definitely is information overload because there's so much great product here. It's my first time here since uh, we've had the blended floor plan. Um, so there's lots to see. There is. Nicholas? So I'm Nicholas Moriarty. Uh, my firm, Nicholas Moriarty Interiors, is based in Chicago. We work nationally, though. Uh, we are a small boutique luxury residential design firm. We focus exclusively on the high-end luxury market, uh, and we really excel at interior architecture as well. So our sweet spot is gut renovations, single family. Um, we love mixing um, genres and eras. Um, so we typically just uh, describe our aesthetic as contemporary, um, a little bit of an, an eclectic contemporary and modern vibe is, is the vernacular that we work within. Excellent. Jeremy? I'm Jeremy Bauer with Bauer Clifton Interiors. We're located up in Juneau, Alaska. We're a residential com and commercial uh, design firm. Um, it's a boutique style. We have uh, five of us there in the office. Um, we are Design aesthetic is based um, probably more on a northwest, northwest Pacific vibe, so we're using a lot of natural materials. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I'm Jason Clifton, the Clifton of Bauer Clifton Interiors. Um, and so, ditto. And then we also uh, have a floral <laughs> studio that's located and based out of Juno as well. And that's called Frenchie's Floral Studio, and it's evolving into doing major weddings um, now across the country. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as you said, two days walking the show. I know your feet are probably sore. There was a lot to take in. Um, can we, in, in some way, can you kind of summarize maybe a, a trend or something that you were seeing consistently? Um, if we could just go down the <coughs> row as well, and if there's some um, like high-level trends that, that you identified, could you share that with the audience? Yeah, um, so uh, I saw a lot of return to luxury and um, glamour. I think for a really long time, we've been um, really interested in industrial, modern, minimal design. Um, you know, we all have been doing white kitchens for years and years and years. Um, and now um, there's so much uh, color back 
Um, and um, I've also noticed just, you know, a lot of custom touches. Um, I think the marketplace has returned to where um, people are looking for really unique um, uh, pieces to um, create this luxurious individual and unique um, projects. Um, so that would be my number one takeaway. Take Nicholas? Um, so I'm going to kind of echo that a little bit, but from my perspective, um, as somebody who does operate more at the luxury level of the design market, we're used to being able to push our clients on uh, the materiality and whatnot that they're using in a project, and we have the budgets to hyper-customize things. But the thing that I think is really wonderful is that you're starting to see color and customization trickle down into that lower approachable luxury line and especially into that bridge market line. So we'll talk about that in some of the finds that we have, but I think that's really great because we're opening up the conversation across the board that white kitchens don't have to be the standard um, and that everything that you do in your house so long as it's done with a certain level of sophistication is going to a make your life better but then also hopefully sell your property faster it's not going to sell it for more money but it's going to sell it faster when you are ready to sell it and I think one of the things that I saw is, and also um, you touched on is the color, um, the customization of so many different materials from the hardware finishes, appliances, cabinetry uh, and we've been seeing this in the, um, the interiors side of, in the furnishings, we're seeing a bright uh, interjection of color um, during the last year or so. And seeing that illustrated through the different products here has been really uh, fun to see and, and quite uh, available. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so in addition to all of that, I've also found that manufacturers and vendors are really tightening their lead times. And so we're of a, size, a society in which, you know, we want it now, we want that instant gratification, and our consumers or our um, clients are like-minded just like that. And so, you know, multi-month lead times for ultra-custom products are a thing of the past, and so they're really tightening that up nicely. So that's just been in conversation with some of the, um, the manufacturers here Indeed, that you yeah. found that. Is that kind of one of the first questions you ask? It's always a, a major, dis yeah, it's yeah. one of our top five questions. That as well as U.S. Distri distribution, because mm -hmm. um, that's always a factor too, um, you know, for customs. And yeah. then, you know, we being located up in Alaska, that's a, yeah. an additional feat to get products up there as well. And I know I'm located in, in Canada, so I know a lot of Canadian designers. Anyone here from Canada? Hi, Sherry. <laughs> um, I know that's a question, too, that, that, that availability, you know, how far across North America is your distribution. So, okay, that's great. So let's get into your designer picks now. I'm going to hand you the magic remote. All right. Yes, here we go, and you can take us through. Okay. Um, ooh, i got to put on my glasses, guys. <laughs> um, so this is um, a Brizo faucet that I really like. It has this kind of capuchon handle. Um, I like that uh, they're mixing materials here. Um, there's also a crystal version. Um, and Brizo, which is really sort of a mid-market, um, high-end mid-brand, um, uh, is now introducing ways to customize. Um, so I think it's really interesting that this notion of customization and luxury is really um, spread to um, all homeowners, homeowners. Do you remember the name of that collection? Because I know Brizo won Best of Show, and I'm, it was it's a different. Rook. It's Rook. It's Rook, okay. Rook. So I know Brizo is obviously introducing a lot of amazing things, so that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Um, this is Victorian Albert. Um, we do a lot of color in our work. Um, we're known for interesting color, um, for um, custom and um, uh, unusual juxtapositions of color. So this was really interesting to me um, that uh, color is not so crazy and out there anymore. Um, it's really sort of in the marketplace and people are now interested in plum tubs and even orange freestanding tubs. Now, if you said that to, when you were doing a, a presentation to a client, you say, I'm going to have a, a plum tub. How do you feel about that? Or is that your clientele that they would just go, that's amazing? Um, or is this a bit of a stretch? I 
think in the bathroom place, a plum tub might be a bit of a stretch mm -hmm. still, but um, you know, we are really known for color. Yeah. Um, we recently did the Kips Bay show house and it was a very colorful room. So typically when people are contacting us, they want color. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I, mm. if I'm presenting it, they might be like, yes, that's exactly what I want. <laughs> Very and cool. And which hall is this located in? Uh, ooh, that's a trick question. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, uh, North Hall. Uh, yeah, I believe North Rizzo's in North, yeah. So I, I think Hello, one of the great Robert. things about this, oh, if I'm Go sorry, ahead. is um, as these companies are pushing this forward, it really suits how we talk to our clients about color and customization. We essentially, you know, go through this really long process of drawing out information through through our questionnaires and through our visual listening activities and whatnot. And the beautiful thing about this is we approach our client spaces as they would dress or as they would see their own persona. And so if your client has a fervent desire and love for color, like why shouldn't her bathtub be plum if that's her favorite color and yep. things like that? So I love that companies are pushing this in a really um, provocative way that is not an inexpensive tub. So it's definitively a commitment, but it's also your house. So why not? If you're going to be the one bathing in it every day, like feel awesome and sexy in your plum tub. Yeah. Cool. It's also um, just to continue with that, the fact that anyone can choose what makes them feel good, yeah. that um, there are those options now out there. Mm -hmm. Do you guys want to add to this? And it's not custom. You know, that's actually part of their line. Yeah, so yeah. there's so many times that you're wanting something, you're trying to have to talk a vendor into it, and it actually now is just part of the regular line. Yeah, it's not adding you a You can order it and premium. the... They have it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yes, you don't have to wait for it. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Um, oh, this was um, a brand I had never heard of um, until the show. It's called Krauss. Um, and uh, what's really interesting to me is that, you know, you can now do green farmhouse sinks. Um, and what I liked about this in particular was that it was very modern, um, very uh, streamlined. Um, but also introduces color. And that's something that I'm very interested in our work right now, is the mix of something traditional, something classic, and how we can sort of turn it on its ear and make it very modern, uh, very interesting. So we're always trying to skirt that line between classicism and what's new and very different and represent it in a new way. They're also a great, a, like, great price point. They're very approachable mm -hmm. um, for a quality product that's also, you know, a little bit more cutting edge too. And I believe they are in South Hall. I think they're just over, over there. I think if I yes. Yeah. And this finish uh, is actually pretty interesting too. I think it's a ceramic coating, so it's a, it's like a non-stick. It's like there's actually a cookware that's produced with that same type of coating, so it's easy to clean, and it's very durable. Mm. Yeah. Um. This was another collection that I thought was really interesting. Um, this is um, from Roll. Uh, they introduced this uh, new faucet handle. Um, you can choose a number of different stone finishes or surface finishes, and the way you turn it on, um, it sort of the circles move in move within circles. Um, and I just thought conceptually it's so interesting. It's also so beautiful to look at. And you have this kind of experience of moving these circles. Um, so uh, I thought just even intellectually, it's an interesting exercise. Beautiful. Anything to add? No? Um, mixed metals. That was everywhere. Um, I. I love that. We just did um, a really large uh, wine room, um, and everything was black and gold um, and bronze. Um, so um, typically, it used to be you don't mix metals, and it would freak clients out if you had chrome and brass and black. Um, and now everyone's doing it, and I think it's actually really uh, attractive. And this also lets you um, bring in other materials in terms of your surfaces, in terms of flooring, paints, wall finishes. Um, I think that juxtaposition really opens um, all sorts of avenues for, um, for designers today.
I think on the mixed metal thing too, it's hilarious to me that people even think like, oh my God, you're mixing metals because we'll get clients that'll ask us about that. They're like, well, do you think it's going to be like too trendy to do this? Or do you think it's timely to do this? And I was like, yeah, look at all of history. I mean, Jesus, you go back to Venetian times, you go back to Mayan times, you go back to like whatever point in history. And there is a fervent mixing of nickels and brasses and golds and like all of these materials for eternity. The entire Bauhaus collection of cookware for Christ sakes is, an, is, is, is a very specific expression of brass and stainless, period, right? Like, so if it was good enough for the 1920s and 30s and it's held from there, like, why are we still debating that? Like, it's, it drives me crazy and it makes me laugh all at the same time. Yeah, um, you know, to that point, uh, you can see they have a stainless steel sink there. Um, and that's like a constant question. Should my sink be black or should it be brass? Because we have this black and... Um, and brass faucet, and the answer is no. You don't have yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, this is also Krauss. Um, I just love that so many showrooms um, were introducing these multicolored um, options and showcasing this. Um, it's something that we saw in Milan maybe five years ago. Um, and I remember people thinking, ah, oh, Americans will never do that because we love our chrome, we love our nickel, and here you go. Mm -hmm. um, I ab absolutely love this cafe collection. I thought it was probably the cutest thing <laughs> that I've seen. Um, it's this reintroduction of white appliances, um, which have been just kind of shunned for a really long time. <clears throat> Um, so I liked the white with the brass, um, the rosy brass. Um, Mila also has um, a white glass um, appliance collection. So I think we're going to see white come back um, as an interesting option for appliances. What do you guys think? White, yes? Yeah, I mean, Thumbs it's up. hilarious Thumbs to down. me that we've been on this trend for the last, you know, 10 years plus of white kitchens being so prominent and people shying away from white appliances. Like, it's, it's kind of funny. Yeah. So, yeah. I really like the way that they're actually putting that, the, again, we're looking at the mixed metals, the options of being able to put in different colored handles and the knobs. That's what really gives it an elevated look. Yeah, and I think that's the key word is now this is elevated because it used to be that white appliances were sort of the entry level, inexpensive appliance, and now you have this luxury version of white appliances, which mixes well with color. Like that green backsplash was so wonderful. Ah, and then? Yeah, there we go. Yep. Pass the remote down. Does anyone have any questions for Young before we go on to uh, for, to Clifton Bauer? <laughs> Did anyone see any of those and agree on those choices? Cool. You mean from the show? Yep. Okay. I'm going back now. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be a stampede. <laughs> no one take the rose gold yeah. one. That's mine. Yes. <laughs> we're going to bring a microphone out because I want to make this really interactive. So we're going to bring a, a microphone for the crowd. Out that's a, a minute, company so. that's been around for a really long time, too. And they do impeccable stainless steel sinks and this foray into the ceramic coating and things like that. It's new for them. But it's a company that we work with a lot that I'm a big fan of. So it's nice to see them get exposure in that way with the new stuff that they're doing because they really are a wonderful company. Company. Great. Okay, Jeremy, I think you're up. Yeah, so this was one of the first uh, finds that we came across on Tuesday when we got here. This is um, a really uh, refreshing take on hardware. Um, this is actually a, a jewelry designer turned hardware designer. So it is really jewelry for the house. Um, it was a wonderful dis a mix of semi precious stones with those different finishes. Um, and it, they really promoted the idea of wanting to work with designers and the fact that if you had, a, had something you specifically wanted to make 
Of course, there'd be a, a slight minimum to that, but they were very open to the idea of, of expanding your vision through um, and how they could help you achieve that. So that was really a, a fun find. What mm -hmm. is the little animal head? Is that a lamb? It's or? like a combination of like dragon, lion, <laughs> lamb. Yeah. I love what, that. What would the name of that <laughs> be? Mythological. Not a liger. <laughs> <laughs> <whatever. Okay. laughs> um, and the company is called Addison Weeks. And so they're located here in South Hall, just right around the corner, I believe. Um, and so when you actually stop by the booth, you'll recognize quite a few of the hardware selections that you've seen in like Architectural Digest um, and a number of other uh, periodicals as well. They have these two beautiful uh, snake poles, door poles, that are right there at the front of the booth that are quite eye-catching. Some of the booths are going to think, what the heck just happened? All of these people stampeding into my booth. That's good. That's a good thing. Yeah, totally. <laughs> oh. uh -huh. And this is a set of, or Kohler is actually introducing Turkish towels as a new accessory that we thought was kind of cool as a way of kind of uh, rounding out their, the, uh, the aesthetic for the bathroom. And so what they're doing is they're producing this in three different colors. It's colors that they actually use. I think this is the thunder gray here that we're focusing on on here. So it's a way of just kind of giving that cohesive look throughout the bathroom. They do it in four different textures or uh, different patterns, I should say. And uh, it was just a beautiful uh, You would never accessory. think to buy your, your towels. Yeah, and it's, cooler, and it's so just that's an, another cool. way of just adding <laughs> that, on that little final touch to yeah. a room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, uh, like you mentioned, the colorway matches their um, fixtures perfectly. So it is the same dye lot or very similar dye lot. So it gives you the ability to, one, coordinate everything um, effortlessly for your clients, but then also, uh, you know, secure that upsell for the most part or that additional sell. And I love that Kohler, their big story lately has been more technology. That's what's been making the news. So it's interesting that these details are still so important mm -hmm. that they're taking it to that level, something, something like a towel. That's very interesting. And Absolutely. we actually, and sorry to interrupt. No, that's fine. Uh, we actually um, had some of these towels displayed in our Kip Space showroom, and um, we got to take them home afterwards. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they're wonderful towels. They're, they're just so great. They're so I mean, yeah. the feel on them is beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it includes robes. But then also their accessories, like countertop accessories, uh, they have some patterns and textures that directly relate to some of their more um, designer vessel sinks and everything else that you've seen throughout their booth as well. Uh, this particular feature is a, a part of a Bosch um, refrigerator. Um, and so <laughs> we're not really seeing the entire thing, but <laughs> this is a part of a 36 inch wide uh, French door bottom freezer refrigerator that has kind of stolen a little bit of the space from both components to incorporate its own freestand or not freestanding, but its own um, beverage center built in right within it. So it holds up to 17 bottles of wine. Um, the top rack can also also be removed uh, for those Magnum bottles, you know, New Year's Eve and everything else for those uh, or a that Tuesday. like love to Tuesday. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow night, basically, yeah. when we all get home from exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, and it's temperature controlled, so it's tailored to any type of wine that you may have. And then, of course, you know, if you want other types of beverages, it's available too. So I thought this was really inspiring. It's great, you know, for perhaps younger uh, couples, single life, uh, empty nesters. You know, it does steal a little bit of the uh, cubic feet from the freezer and fridge, so it may not be ideal for, you know, large families, but it's a cool feature. And but is it clear in the center, just the beverage? It is, portion? yeah, just the beverage center, yep. Cool. And the whole, the whole appliance is glass front, but, it, you know, it's a, a, a nice way of thinking about taking two, two appliances and combining them in one. So in spaces where you are wanting that designated beverage center, but you are limited on space. This is kind of a nice solution for that. Yeah. I like that you chose something for function too. I mean, we've been talking about, you know, maybe the details, but the, the functional is so important too. And Absolutely. I know you find that in the, in the halls as well. This was kind of a fun find. This is also a cross faucet. We're really kind of focusing on cross today. Yeah. <laughs> um, we need a representative here I to know, be taking right? all of this in. We're going to send <laughs> <Right>? them the video. <laughs> <laughs> Something that was really kind of fun about this, this is a, uh, the Callisto 2-in-1 faucet. So um, it has two lines running to it. So it always has you know, the standard hot and cold water line, but in the center there's a separate line that you can actually, actually designate either nitro coffee or beer wow. or filtered water. Really? Or yeah. sparkling water, too. Yes. Yeah. 
Cool. And so, you know, of course you'd have uh, refrigeration very nearby to run that line there, but you yeah. need the CO2 to run either the coffee or the keg. But um, it's just kind of a, I thought it was a, a refreshing, kind of innovative idea that was kind of fun to highlight there. That would be dangerous on a Monday morning, just more coffee, more coffee. <laughs> or beer, right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with that theme, yes. Yeah. <laughs> this was, I think, absolutely stunning. This is the panoramic porcelain. Um, this is by Dow Tile. Um, it's actually truly one of the best representations or reproductions of actually a natural product or a natural material in porcelain. Um, what they do is that these are a standard slab size. Um, they're available in either a six millimeter or 12 millimeter thickness. Um, the 12 millimeters allow for a book matching, so for a really dynamic look. Um, installs um, both horizontally, vertically, uh, just like you would use just a normal uh, natural slab. But um, the detail is just wonderful. And this one here is, it's not so much an innovative product, but what Thermador was actually doing is really kind of pushing an innovative concept of how to use their appliances there. Um, you know, this is showing the under cabinet refrigeration two drawer system here. And it's not just for the kitchen anymore. Um, it's thinking outside the box and thinking that, okay, in the pet area, you know, we want to keep refrigerated foods for the pet. Let's think about putting it there. Or maybe in uh, a dressing room, we will have uh, makeup products that might need refrigeration. It's not like you want to store those like next to the cream cheese in the refrigerator. Let's put a refrigerator in that room where it actually can be used. So I thought that was kind of a, a nice idea. Something that a lot of vendors are doing just in general too is they're listening to the end consumers and they're listening to designers too about how they're actually using the product. Um, one of the things that we do is a lot of consulting work with major brands and we've pushed for a long time now this idea that you need to be showing your refrigeration in master bathrooms and in bedrooms and in other parts of the house and you can fully integrate most of these things so they can be integrated into custom furniture so they completely disappear but that your client has the ultimate functionality that they need there so you're seeing it more and more and more and it's it's quite awesome and are they showing in the booth are they showing multi applications oh yeah like this yep yeah mm -hmm. as i said i i kind of hang out at the stage here so i don't get to see a lot of the shows so yeah they did a really nice booth this year i mean lots of different vignettes so on the left there yeah, they actually have a, a master closet set up there mm -hmm. and then this other one on the right here you're not seeing the rest of it, but it's, um, you know, there's the pet toys and whatnot. So it's really kind of painting the picture yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. And the fronts of these refrigerators too are available with um, the custom panel fronts. So they blend, blend in seamlessly to your uh, cabinetry. Yeah, and this is honestly like the dressing room of anyone's dreams. So in addition to the under cabinet refrigeration, they're showing <coughs> built-in coffee, tea dispenser, espresso machine. So, I mean, you really do not have to like get up from your space. It's a fantastic yeah. way to start your day. Uh, and then also end it because there's a, a wine refrigerator that's also displayed in this particular dressing room scenario. <laughs> yeah. So Perfect. Yeah, I was like ready to move in. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So I'll take this one. Um, this is a unique hardware line. It's um, it actually just at the very beginning or entrance here at the South Hall. And they're based out of Turkey. And they carry a variety of different hardware for the entire home, essentially. So ranging from uh, furniture hardware to bathroom um, hardware suites to you know your standard door and cabinetry hardware as well. And so a multitude of different styles, forms, but they also offer just about every finish available under the sun, um, including some of these like really bright, vibrant colors as well. Um, this is their first time showing at KBiz, and so they, while they don't yet have U.S. distribution, um, they do ship throughout the U.S. via DHL, and their lead times are right around, what, I think with that, three to four weeks. Yeah. So it's still, it's still approachable. Um, Sorry, did you say the name? Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> putting you on the spot. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Let me follow up on that. Okay. <laughs> It's really great, though. I, and I also am I'm seeing so much green. Do you guys agree? Like a green, lot of green hardware, that's, that's definitely new. Mm -hmm. You pointed out the tile, and um, yeah, it's beautiful. I think the name of it's CB, C-E-B-I. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
And they were actually, you know, bringing up the fact that customization too. Um, so mixing some of their, their colors, they really were eager to try to get into the U.S. market. So listening to your ideas and, and saying, yes, we can do that. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for a U.S. Distri distributor. So anyone who might be interested, you can find them here in this hall. Yeah. It's important to note too that NKBA is really trying to bring in the global brands. Uh, there's a program called NKBA Global Connect where they're uh, acting as a liaison to help facilitate you know, coming into North America because so many European brands, um, you know, uh, Mediterranean brands, everything, they want to be doing business in the U.S. So uh, I think it's really important that NKBA is, is acknowledge that they're with this program. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is an exciting product that we came across as well. It's here in South Hall, um, displayed just right around the corner at Arizona Tile, um, or excuse me, Florida Tile. <laughs> um, Wrong state. <laughs> right? <laughs> They're close. No. No. Uh, <laughs> we're in Alaska, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a really unique system. So it's the Curlite, it's the Wonder Wall Curlite panel system. Um, and so these are available in 39 inch by 118 inch tall uh, panels. And it's uh, custom artwork that's been applied. And so it allows you to, you know, achieve that beautiful mural um, feature wall and a variety of different applications, ranging from hospitality to a master bathroom in the shower, um, and really just adds that nice, you know, beautiful touch. On a really durable surface. So thinking about, um, you know, why not just use wallpaper? What this is allowing is something that is in a really high traffic zone or a really heavy use zone. Um, it provides that durability that it, it's just, it's, it's going to be there. You know, there's no upkeep to it. Beautiful. And they have a multitude of different styles available, too. Um, but yeah, as far as the versatility and everything else um, and durability. So, you know, for instance, in a, a conference area, um, it's a much more durable surface when you have conference chairs, you know, constantly being um, pushed back into the wall, where we've all experienced wall coverings do not handle such behavior <laughs> treatment. Uh, this is a flush mounted sink system. And so they have a few different profiles. Um, and so it's kind of an evolution of the undermount in which we're all familiar with. Um, and, you know, it's certainly not an overmount, but it did just, you know, provide that little bit of detail um, uh, and luminescence that, you know, kind of catches your attention and your eye as you pass by. And it's also available in a multitude of different finishes, including the antique brass, which we're all loving these days. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that, that was from, am I putting you on the spot again, did you say? Uh, that one was, you secured this one. <laughs> <laughs> when I, we'll have to cheat. cheat. Yeah, I have to, yeah, I have to look. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll get back to you on that. And then this is pit cooking system uh, systems, which is also here in South Hall. So it's, you know, really in close proximity <laughs> for everyone to stop by um, just down this hallway right here. And so I was really drawn to this particular product. Um, it's a, um, uh, a burner system that's available in a multitude of different configurations that allows you to install this in every type of countertop um, with the exception of wood. And so it's fully integrated within the kitchen itself. Um, if you're interested in just a single burner, up to, I think, six or seven burners, um, there's a multitude of different configurations to achieve that you know, streamlined um, application. Um, here we're showing the controls on the front, uh, but they also have those available on the top side, um, right next to the burners as well. Uh, distributed throughout the US, and I believe it was a two-week lead time. Wow. So can you put them anywhere, or there is set configurations? There are set configura okay. configurations, but they have a plethora of options okay. to meet your needs. But using just the single burner option kind of allows you to do that really custom placement if you would want right. to. Mm -hmm. And I did walk by the booth, and I was like, what are they doing here? Yeah, yeah it's a really cool. modern, yeah. really clean look. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's a feature that you would see you know, a, a abroad, basically. Um, but now it's obtainable here in the U.S., too. Yeah, that is fabulous. I can see like a really sleek kitchen with a giant countertop and then you have these burners coming out of the countertop. Because mm -hmm. just about every appliance out there now can be hidden with a custom panel except for the range. And so this was a way of kind of continuing that customization right through the range and only having just the burners exposed. So 
Mm -hmm. And the, the box itself, the metal um, box beneath, like where all the components are, um, it's very streamlined and condensed, so very low profile. Um, and so it does allow you to uh, have its recessed within a countertop th um, built-up edge detail like this. And you're, uh, not lo you're not losing too much space underneath. Exactly. Okay. And you can even float it out. So it's great okay. for those clients or projects that require that little bit more of uh, accessibility um, because it, you're able to achieve that full clearance underneath. Uh, this was fun. Um, <laughs> this is the Terrazzo um, quartz line from Santa Margarita. Uh, that's also located here in South Hall. And so, you know, I think we've, most of us have seen these brightly colored, large scale, large format terrazzo um, inspirational photos throughout Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest galore. Um, and again, most of those are coming from abroad, but uh, this has been my first time to experience a, just, uh, a manufacturer who's making these available throughout the US. And so, um, being up in Alaska, uh, we work with the Pacific Northwest in Seattle, and so Arizona Tile. Um, carries this particular line. And it's available in large scale format of slabs in every CM thickness, as well as tile, too. Mm -hmm. I love that um, so many people are picking up on terrazzo in so many different ways now. It's, it's one of my favorite materials from early modernism. And uh, I think it just can lend itself to ultra contemporary, ultra modern, or really traditional projects, too, depending on how you work with it. It's a super fun material. And there's more and more vendors out there that are doing it really well. And we're showing some really brightly colored ones here, but they have some beautiful just white on white, so white and black that's a really high contrast that's really striking. So I, I'd encourage you to go take a look at that. That's, it's a really interesting, fresh look. We're on the last slide, so we might take it. And also here in the South Hall is the, the Waterlands. The theme. The yes, oh. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> we, well, actually, I yeah, prefer the South Hall, personally. <laughs> <laughs> There's been some great finds. Um, this is the Waterlands Bathtub Company, and so it's, um, it's, it's just a beautiful company, to be quite honest. So they offer cast iron tubs in a multitude of different styles and forms, but what makes them truly unique is that they then dip them in molten, le uh, molten uh, metal. Um, and so it's available, you're able to achieve that antique brass, that copper, the pewter, the stainless steel finishes. We're also seeing the um, verdigris, uh, uh, copper finish there as well. Um, is something like that a one-off, or is it or you could actually order it like that? Do they do it individually? Uh, they they are made to order. Um, okay. but they have a pretty streamlined uh, lead time as well, ranging anywhere from four to eight weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, a wide variety of different styles too. So you know, it's a way to really connect with those mixed metallics. The interiors are always white. So. Mm -hmm. And Nicholas. All right. So the first thing that I'm showing is um, a series of uh, metal um, vessel sinks from Baudelaire. I, I'm the kind of person that hates vessel sinks uh, at baseline. I think they're gross. I don't really like the aesthetic of them. And I found these to be quite visually arresting. I just thought the machining of the metal was quite beautiful. The colorations in the, in the matte black, the bronze, and then the um, brass that they did were really stunning as well. Um, I also think it's a really nice... Um, a uh, way to reinvent the the stainless steel vessel sink that we all became so familiar with in the in the 90s and 2000s that just looked like somebody took their stainless steel mixing bowl from the kitchen and put it in their bathroom, which is <laughs> why I hate them so much. So I, I love these and I'm very much looking forward to putting these in our projects. We, we deal with, even with our female clients, with a heavily uh, masculine style. So these are really right up our alley. Baudelaire also does really beautiful concrete vessels and things of that too. So they're here in the South Hall. I would check um, them out if you guys haven't. Um, the next one, just in general, is decor. Um, decor, we, and again, we deal at the luxury level, right? So decor isn't an appliance brand that we work with a lot. We're working upmarket a little bit more. Um, but decor is a brand that we've worked with consistently over the years because they do hit that bridge to, lug, to, to, to entry point luxury market really well. Um, and the thing that I like about what Decor is doing is they're really, they're really focusing on bringing a, a very sleek and elegant line to a lot of their new product line. The flush mount gas 
cooktops with the brass um, cooking rings, um, just the general overall aesthetic of the booth I thought was quite lovely. The way that they masked their kitchen on the outside was beautiful. Um, and then Decor is really giving Gaganau a run for their money with their stainless steel interior appliances. Um, they're also doing freedom openings, right? So touch openings on their refrigeration. For any of you that do modern design like we do, we do completely handleless kitchens and that's become really uh, um, accessible now because you don't have to worry about putting a huge appliance pole on a refrigerator anymore. Um, so we love that from them as well. And again, going back to some of the earlier comments about customization and color, uh, Decor is really also also giving companies like Blue Star and Le Cornu a run for their money, um, not necessarily technologically, but from the standpoint of customization, right? Now with Decor, you can do color on any of their appliances, I think, um, uh, and, and pretty much the, the, the runs the spectrum of colors, too, that you can do. So it's a phenomenal thing to see from them, and I'm very excited about what they're going to do in the future um, with that. So this is just showing that stainless in in interior of the refrigerator and then some of the custom options that are available on their appliances now. Um, it's a really great showing there, though. If you guys didn't see that, um, I, would, I would encourage you to go to look at that in the Central Hall. Um, Inox. If you guys aren't familiar with Inox, I believe they're here in the South they Hall. They are in South Hall, yeah. Um, this is a company that we love. Um, Inox, you can see on, the, on your left, um, those kind of Gropius Bauhaus-inspired poles. Um, they are really, you know, throwing their hands up and saying, do whatever you want with mixed finishes, and I love that. Um, what you're seeing here isn't PVD coating, which is what a lot of us are used to when we're seeing color and things like that in fixtures and fittings. Uh, this is actually all ceramic coated. Um, so the ceramic coating that Inox does is insanely durable. So this application is both applicable for interior and exterior. If you have keys and rings and things like that, you're not going to run the risk of scratching these because that ceramic is just so durable. Um, and the same thing here. They have their you know, standard list of colors but you can basically do anything within your, you know, your creative imagination for, for hardware there. So for any of us that are looking for a really cool way to punch up an interior project, this is a phenomenal company to look at. They've been a Design Bytes um, participant twice now, and they've, they were the first to introduce um, a lock on a sliding door or yes. on a barn door. Yes. So that really solves a design challenge. And I, I listened to the story from uh, Chin Yen, who's the, the yeah. founder. And it was interesting, the motivation behind some of their locking systems. So yes. it's not only the aesthetic, it's, yep. it's they're coming up with new ways um, just to lock things, yes. which is really cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is not so revelatory, but it's something that I love. This is the new sh custom shower surround system from Roburn. Um, Roburn, full disclosure, is a company that I consult with um, and I've worked with um, for a long time. I love their product. Um, we use a tremendous amount of Roburn. It's engineered within an inch of its life and it's just the best on the market, period. They started doing custom mirrors a long time ago um, and this is their next foray into that fully custom. So this shower surround represents about $16,000 worth of shower surrounds so it's not super cheap. Um, but if you go look at this in the, in the, in the um, North Hall, um, you will see the tooling and the machining that Roburn is known for. It is impeccably done, and it is absolutely stunning. So this is something that we're very much looking forward to. Um, and also just having you know, somebody, uh, from our perspective, a vendor and a partner who we can just send off our schematics to, our shops, and they can fully engineer it, we don't have to handhold, like, that is everything to me. Um, we have great metal workers in Chicago, but this takes it to a whole new level, and I'm very excited about this product This line. was one of my favorites, too. It's so oh, good. It was so good. Eye catcher. Yeah. Beautifully done. Yeah. You're like, shower surround, really? Yes, shower surround, really. Yeah, it was really Obsessed. beautifully done. And if you do go see this, and you're not familiar with Roburn, you should check out their medicine cabinets, because they are really innovative. Yes. The, the, the slide up. Yeah. Love those. The uplift is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Everything they do is great. Um, uh, the next couple of slides here are the new introductions from Monogram. So Monogram is a company that um, uh, is really reinventing itself. They won Best of Show this year with their booth that Richard did. Um, he always kills it on the design front. He's an amazing designer. Uh, this is a product that we are extremely excited about. Um, Monogram is great quality, but it's not something that we've ever really specified because it's never fit our aesthetic as, as a more modern design firm. This is their minimalist collection that they've introduced. Um, and for the money, I think it's one of the sexiest wall oven systems that's been out on the market. Um, it kind of takes um, direct competition
opposition to what we're used to seeing from Mila from that really sleek wall oven situation and does it in a little bit more of um, uh, uh, an interesting design perspective, right? It's not so sleek. There's a little bit of a design element there. So we're very excited about this. It comes with an introduction of a steam oven now for them too, which is great. Um, and, oh, I thought there was another slide, but maybe not. Um, hold on. Okay, well, it may or may not go forward. Um, this is a company that we're also really excited about. It's new to us. It was a find um, here at the show. This is NatureCast. Um, NatureCast is an outdoor kitchen cabinet company. They are also here in the South Hall. Um, I think there's one more slide. Um, so we in Chicago get 100 days of summer if we're lucky. So we do a lot of outdoor kitchen design. And you know we're, we're used to having to either have covered spaces or do stainless steel, or there's a few other companies that do PVC and things like that. But um, NatureGas is doing injected molded um, products. So there's, there's really great options there if you, if you want something to have a, like a five-piece door look or you want it to have a wood texture or something like that. They're actually taking the raw wood um, and casting that with injection molding so that it really is showcasing the actual grain and, and, and things of that nature. Um, now owned and operated by a Canadian company too, so it's going to meet a whole new demand for, for exterior um, durability as well. Really beautiful colors, really beautiful finishes. That last one, this is actually a fully stainless steel framed cabinet, so something that we've seen from a lot of custom kitchen cabinet companies that we've personally never seen outside that I'm very excited about. Um, this will suit our North Shore clientele that kind of blends that, um, uh, that modern and traditional vibe that we do. So this was probably my favorite thing. They're, I think, just right over in the center if you guys want to check them out. Okay, that's great. It's amazing how you send kind of four designers out on the floor and how different all your picks were. But it just kind of shows the, the breadth of product that's available um, at the show. So I'd love to open up the discussion to the audience. Was there anything, um, agree, disagree, or is there anything that we left out here that was absolutely standout to, to any of you? Ca anyone care to share? And we have the microphones, I believe. I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce this right, but Pasco um, is the company. They have an innovative um, kitchen sink faucet where the back comes off, comes around, and you have two spray nozzle areas. Like, you can use both, and it goes back down. It's awesome. And it's in the South Hall. South Hall is winning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, these are, this is kind of the, the smaller brands that are, um, you know, they're coming out with, with the innovation. That's why they're here, to get all of your attention. Um, so th that is definitely a theme. I, you do see a lot of innovation in, with the smaller booths yeah. and the smaller brands. Uh, this was at a cabinet manufacturer's booth, and I unfortunately don't know the name, but it was in the South Hall. Okay. <laughs> um, and I think it was actually a product that they were just having in their booth. It wasn't something they actually were selling. But they had a very large island that had a large overhang, and they had a sink and a range on it, which we all see all the time. So it's one continuous plane. But on the back side, on the other side of the sink and the range, that a little piece of glass, probably about six inches tall, was kind of the backsplash to stop all the water from the sink or the mess from the range that was going around. So you, you can have somebody sitting on the other side and you were kind of keeping your countertop clean without having something weird sitting there or having to have two different levels of countertop. So it kept it clean, but it was something real simple. That's been actually really popular in Europe for some time because, you know, space is at a premium. So you would have these cooking islands, and then some sort of division for the eating section. Um, so um, it's uh, nice to know that it's, I mean, I think design has become very global. So what's cool in Milan is cool here. Um, Great. Any more finds? Anyone wants to share? Trends? Anyone? Over here? Oh, there. Um, kind of on the heels of what you said with minimal space, there's a company called Fotile that has a sink and a dishwasher, like the dishwasher opens on the countertop. Oh. So it's all one piece. Wow. And you can also there, switch out the dishwashing basket for a, a different basket where you put your vegetables. So it'll shake the vegetables and wash them just like your hands would. 
Hmm. But I just thought when you have minimal space, like I do apartments, so like I, I'm, it's a lot, it's, it's tight a lot, a lot of the time. So I thought that would be a nice like space saving and then you can use the countertop and have the, the cutting board built into the sink as well. And then it's multi-use and it was great. They were a uh, Design Bytes presenter as well. So they have a two-in-one system and the three-in-one. And I found to uh, one of the features of that product itself was um, that sterilization almost of the, uh, the vegetables. So it said it took away 99.9% .9 of bacteria. Um, you know, those veggie washes that you get and stuff like that. But it was amazing. You did that right in the sink, done. Then wash your dishes, then do this. It was really, really cool. Wow. Really cool. Yeah. I think we had someone over here. I just hit my microphone, so okay. <laughs> I too thought that uh, the Monogram Appliances had a really interesting um, new appliance, appliance line that you could actually, the wall ovens that you could put on the bookcases, um, you also saw that they had all of their cooktops put into a large Parsons table, which I thought was really nice to have that much air beneath it. Um, the other thing that I saw in the appliance world was um, LG's Craft Ice that they're doing in the refrigerator freezer. Um, it only makes like six in a 24-hour period, but, you know, no one's really recommending you drink more than six <laughs> hard cocktails anyways, or you just bag it up, obviously, if you have a party. But I thought that was really fascinating, too. So you have basically three types of ice in the same frig freezer drawer that oh, wow. you would ordinarily, including the big ball craft ice. Mm -hmm. oh, that's Very excellent. Cool. We'll have to check that out. This yeah. is something that, again, um, there's a couple of things that we didn't get to um, that I would have loved to show you guys that is, I think, really important about what's happening in the industry. The, the prevalence of cooking at home is so high now. Um, nutrition is on everybody's mind now. Um, and so th the thing that's great about that is appliance brands are responding to how people want to live in their home. So we give a lot of talks about redefining the work triangle and redefining kitchens and it's not about this intersection between your 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 sink and your range and whatever some people want a bar that's really central to how to their kitchen you know some people want dog stations that are really central to their kitchens so th these things become super important for these appliance manufacturers to produce for us and they finally are starting to and it's really exciting because it's it, it gives us the opportunity then to really hyper customize all of these spaces for our clients based on how they're actually going to live in their property, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of the company, but they had a porcelain countertop on an island, and they had mounted underneath in, in the cabinet an induction device. Mm -hmm. So on top of the countertop, there were no grates for the cooktop. There were no dials. But he took a frying pan with some water in it, or maybe it was just a pot with some water in it, and put it on top of the countertop. They pulled out a drawer, for, and it was listed from 1 to 10, and he pushed 8. And within just a few minutes, mm -hmm. the water was boiling on the pot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm that was sitting on top of the countertops. And you could put your hand, he moved the pot that was with boiling water, you could put your hand there and you didn't feel a thing. Yeah, now induction itself has been around for years and years, but these new applications, and I've seen this a lot, you must have seen this a lot at your Kachina, yeah. that's uh, in, in Europe, so once again, glad it's coming yeah. here for that. Uh, I that. am such a fan of induction, and it's still kind of slow to really take off um, here, I think. But um, it makes a lot of sense in city living because, um, you know, e it's just easier to have um, a magnetic source. You don't, it doesn't emit, emit heat. Um, and, you know, it cooks very quickly and you get like a really nice constant simmer on induction. Um, so I'm a huge fan. That showroom is, it's, it's either this hallway or the next hallway, almost at the front of the show of this hall is where that's at. It's a, a, it's a Spanish company, I believe, but don't quote me on that. I forget. Names is... <laughs> Not my it's on my phone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can all walk over there together. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, I noticed everyone kind of looking when you were saying um, you must have all captured a lot of images of inspiration. Um, I'm sure from walking the show floor. I remember years ago you weren't, weren't allowed to take pictures at trade shows, but right. <laughs> it's a little little. Di I'm aging myself, but it's uh, <laughs> it's a little bit different now. So, um, any other comments in terms of favorite booths, favorite products from the audience? Come on, guys. It's day three. You've seen a lot. <laughs> any, any or any questions from our our designers on the panel? Is everyone tired on day three? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm I think tired so. Too. And I think that information overload is actually a thing. So. <laughs> well, and who all attended the bash last night? So that could also be a. Factor. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> maybe yeah. small factor. Yes. Small, yeah, factor. small factor. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we can wrap up then. Thank you very much to Jason, Jeremy, Nicholas, and Young for really scouring the floor. That takes a lot of time to put those thoughts and everything together and for getting us the imagery on the fly. That's fantastic. We love this session, the designer finds. So thank you very much for doing that. Thank you for having yes. us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, all of the booths that we mentioned, you know, we South, but of course, in the other ones too. There's still a couple of hours of the show. So if there's something that you're really interested in, uh, please go and mention that it was an NKBA designer, designer find. So that would be great. Everyone enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.